neem face is just feral. And it's also incredibly beautiful. So one of the things is the moves are so good. The climbing is not just a series of sort of edges and, and, and snappy gnarl. It's, it's fragile, delicate and beautiful. It's like, it's like meeting a beautiful woman that's a psychopath. Probably in a typical week in Wales, we were in a death situation probably four or five times a, bit a week, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, in 10, 15 years' time, Indian Face will still be a complete trouser filler when a lot of the steep stuff, I think, will have, will have to a certain extent, phased in difficulty. It wasn't like a, a really big deal for, for me to, to not do Indian Face the last time I came down here. Um, I was down, it was like one, one route of a few that I was, was interested in trying to do. In 2007, um, I just had like a year where I'd done all of these uh, hard routes and I seemed to do more and more and more and I felt like really on, on quite a roll. And you just have that niggling feeling at the back of your head like, you know, are you heading towards it, having an accident because um, you're not really in tune. The Indian face for me wasn't like a, it was important, but not in a really big way. So I thought it's not, it's not worth it to, to risk that. Most of the, the gear that's on Indian face is about halfway uh, up the pitch. And so you, it's a long pitch. So you climb about uh, 60 or 70 feet maybe, and you get um, a cluster of really small uh, micro wires. It's quite a lot of runners here, but they're all, all of these are all rubbish. And it's just that one and that, well, it's that, that's, that's the best one. That's actually a good placement. And then just a bit further up, another 10 feet up, I found a little skyhook placement or a couple of skyhooks. Um, and then the whole section for the next 30 feet above that is the, the crux section. And you can really fall from any, any of those moves if you, if you blew it or your foot slipped or something like that. Yeah, tough effort for John Redhead to be up here, like on the lead, taking a big fall into some of these wires. I presume it must have been some of these that he fell into. I'm not sure though. Maybe something lower, but... <sighs> if you were falling from right beside any of that gear, it would be probably okay. And you'd be reasonably confident they would hold you, but you're going to fall a long way onto it. And so either the rock might break because they're very shallow placements, or, or the RP will break. Um, so you really feel like there is that relatively large chance that all of the gear could rip and you could you could fall to the ground from 120 feet. <laughs> so you're you're not going to survive. Uh, so it, it is one of the few routes where there is that significant chance of of death if you fall. I felt like it was good for me to be able to to not do a route that's bold because I spent my whole life doing. Um, like dangerous routes where I do them with, with hopefully a good reserve um, and like I think about them a lot so you're really tuned into the risk so you hopefully minimise it but you're like constantly aware it's like how are you how's your measuring of the risk is it accurate like are you getting carried away with your notion of your own ability and and what you should and shouldn't be doing I'm going to tie you into into this with like um, a few metres of slack if I take a fall from right at the end and the gear holds, you'll get you'll get pulled up. 
The main thing is do hold on. Yeah. Is it feeling same? When we got up this morning, we couldn't see the crag for the cloud. And um, when we came up, it was like really damp in the air. And um, it was a fresh wind, so that was working out. But we could just feel spits and spots of rain. And as I have sailed down, the rain got kind of worse for a minute. And I thought that was it. I wasn't even going to be able to get on it. So I was so ready to do the route. And it's just like, it's just, I've just got to do it if I get the chance. When you're on a steep route, uh, it's powerful and the holds are quite good and quite big and you have to like jump between them and grab them and um, that, that helps you to concentrate on just the move. But on Indian face, like, you are just kind of clawing at these tiny little edges so you feel kind of, that you, you just have that feeling if you can't get much purchase on the wall, you, you've got nothing really good to hold on to. Um, so you, you have to be totally cool in your head and you're just aware that you're the whole time for 20 minutes you're on the edge of panicking. Orange. Just as I was trying to get in all the gear and you kind of have to stop and concentrate on that for a minute and the whole time I could feel my left foot rolling off the smear. I'm like, oh, there's something not right here, like the, either the humidity's got worse or my boot's dirty or something's wrong. Um, but I think it was just my foot was getting tired because I was taking that bit longer and putting that bit much more force through my feet. How much be here, Claire?
once you're established on the route and you've been climbing for 10 minutes, you're like, I'm here. Well, I've got over the fact that I'm leaning in the face. It's like you're in the middle of it and you're just like, OK, well, let's just concentrate on the moves, just the next few moves or the next piece of gear. And then you just make progress. Okay, I'm mantling on. Swatch is on the red. When you get to that no hands rest um, on top of the guitar and you're stood there and that's your that's your last point to, to retreat. And of course you could retreat, you could stand there for as long as you want to get rescued. Uh, so you have to make the choice again to commit yourself to do it when you're in the middle of it. It's like the loneliest place you could be in climbing, uh, on this foot ledge at the start of the Indian Face Crux. I felt like I'd got over that already. In, in my head, like in advance, you know, in the last couple of years, really thinking about this route, um, and so when I when I got there, I didn't really feel anything. I just was like, well, I'm, what am I going to do? Am I going to do it or bail? <sighs> Come on! I was like, there's no way I'm going to bail. I'm going to do it. So all you do is like wait till you, your feet and hands feel <coughs> rested as possible, and then there's nothing left but to just start climbing. So <laughs> just go for it. Okay, I'm at the jug. <sighs> okay, hang on, I'm just gonna get some gear in and then I can relax. Climbs are really good when they only just work. So there's only just enough holds and stopping places um, to get rest and there's only just enough gear to make you feel tempted enough to actually lead it. Um, but it's also sustained enough and hard enough and serious enough that it's going to give you a really full on experience when you're there. Woo! It's totally psychological. Just all in the head. I, I think that people do, do things in all aspects of life that uh, you can't afford to fail. You can't afford to blow it. You get one chance, you've got to do it like really mundane things like driving and uh, well all sorts of other things in your life and so if you're a climber and you know you can climb the route 
but you must not fall off. That's okay. It's not. It's not such a big deal. <laughs> so as long as you can convince yourself of that, then it's okay. So that's good. Enjoyed it. Oh, God, God for that. <laughs> Just in time there. <laughs> Starting to piss down with rain. Okay, Claire, I'm at the ledge. I'm safe. Cheers. Excellent. Just in time. Oh, I'm so glad I did that. I'm so glad I did that. What do you think, Claire? Are we done? Have we talked about Indian face till we're blue in the face? <laughs> Just a route. Now tell me about these dragons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know Johnny but as Johnny Dodds was saying uh, like you, you get such such a lot of hype that you feel like a dragon's gonna come up and eat you when you're in the middle of the crux. <laughs> it's a bit right.